Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to worship this morning. This is the seventh Sunday after Epiphany. I am glad that you have joined us for worship today here at St. Luke. I am Pastor Marilyn Lang. I am about to be, really, really about to be installed as your new interim pastor. I will be with you in the coming months um, to walk with you on the journey between pastors. So I am privileged and honored to be here, and I look forward to getting to know everyone in the coming weeks and months. A few announcements this morning before worship. Um, please refer to your announcement sheet that you should have picked up on the way in. Are there any other announcements for the good of the church? Yes. There's bread out in the hall, and it has very good dates on it. Bread with good dates. <laughs> Remind everybody that St. Luke's is bonding with Thriven to have a fundraiser next Sunday. It's going to be a carry-out chili lunch. We had sign-up sheets out here in the side last Sunday, and a lot of people signed up. We could use a few more, so the sign-up sheets are out there again. <clears throat> what it's going to be is a, a carry-out lunch bag of chili and fixings to go with it, and we're going to just have people come in the door purchase a, uh, or pick up a bag of the chili lunch and do a free will offering. Um, everything for this event has been donated, so uh, there's no cost to us for this, and um, everything we take in will be profit. It's to benefit the <clears throat> Rick and Janice Fleas who lost their home to a fire early in February. Um, if you have time to make a batch of chili, or package up some veggies for the snack bag. Um, we appreciate it. And then if you can come and help next Sunday between 9, 9.30 and 1, 1.30, I think, um, we'll have a job for you to do, and you'll help out the community. It's open to the public. There are some flyers out here on the table by the sign-up sheet if you want to take one and post it somewhere to help us um, make the event known. Um, downstairs in the kitchen are um, ingredients. To, if you want to make chili, help yourself to some of those ingredients down there. There's hamburger in the freezer downstairs, and there's veggie bags and little snack bags for you to make up those snack bags. And there's Thrive It t-shirts. There's 20 t-shirts. Take one if you'd like, and if you help at the event next week and you feel like you want to wear it, that would be nice too. Thank you. Today we're taking script orders today. So um, one of the focuses that's going on just through, I think, early this week or late this week is Quick Trip is 9% versus a 4%. So there are new script order forms out in both the North Next and out here in the hall. And also the forms for the flower ordering. So we are doing a fundraiser with the In Living Color flowers. It's flowers, herbs, bowls, hanging baskets. The money that we raise is going towards the projective fund for the ladies. So if you need a form or if you have any questions, please see me after church. Thank you. Any other announcements? <coughs> I understand we have a temple flower. I'm sure many of you have seen the ad on TV for Hubie and Abraham about tell the insurance company you mean business. You know, we can use that same slogan, tell the devil you mean business. And one way you can do that is fasting. Fasting in more for a spiritual growth than a physical growth. Fasting, you deny yourself something, either food or pleasure. And in place of that, you put your thoughts on God and prayer. 
and grow closer to God through prayer. It requires discipline and control. I'm sure many of you have had to have tests, medical tests, where you've had to fast. About halfway through that fast, you're not supposed to take water. Well, guess what? You pray for it. That's what happens. But that's where the strengthening comes in and, the, and the growing closer to God. It demonstrates the need of God's help and guidance through complete dependence on Him. And this is what God would have us to do, even though we as humans seem to think we can do it ourselves. There are many who fasted in the Bible. David, David and you remember Daniel, Elijah, and of course the one that we hear about most often is the one where Jesus fasted in the wilderness to gain strength. Have you ever fasted? Shelley's handing out some cards. If you care to share information about if you fasted and whether it helped you or give us some insights, we would appreciate that. You can put your name on if you want. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But it was, we're trying to make you aware of the benefits of fasting because it draws you closer to God and a better relationship with God. And after all, isn't this what we're here for? Go closer to him and be his servants. Thank you. Any other announcements? All right, we will continue with the installation of the interim pastor. St. Luke Lutheran Church. We ask God's guidance as the new part of the journey. This interim time begins. Let us pray together. Gracious God, you have blessed and sustained us for many years and have given us this life together in the Christian community of this congregation. Be with us now, we pray, as we enter this same between time. Bless us and guide us as we prepare for the next stage in this congregation's life. Give us courage, patience, and vision, and strengthen us in our Christian vocation of witness to the world and service to others. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. I have been chosen by your leaders as your interim pastor to be God's servant among you during this special time until you call your next pastor. I pledge to you my commitment as a minister of the gospel among you. I will pray for you, listen to you, assist you in the tasks of this transition period, encouraging and challenging you as we move through this time together. And we, the people of St. Ruth's Lutheran Church, receive you as the servant of God and pledge our partnership as we continue to use the gifts God has given us in the many ministries of the gospel in this place, in worship, in education, witness, service, and stewardship. May God bless us and lead us as together we embark on this interim journey. And may we view this time as a time of learning and growth as God's Spirit instructs us and prepares us for the future mission and ministry of the church in this place. Thanks be to God. Our congregation council has met with Pastor Marilyn and has agreed to an inter interim time of ministry for our congregation. We now pub publicly recognize this ministry among us and heartily welcome her in our midst. Pastor Marilyn, in the presence of this congregation, Will you commit yourself to the new trust and responsibility and, and accordance to the Holy Spirit and the confession of the Lutheran Church? Will you love, serve, and pray for God's people? Will you nourish them with the word and holy sacraments? 
leading them by your own example in the use of the means of grace, in faithful service and holy living. I will, and I ask God to help me. And you people of God, will you receive this messenger of Jesus Christ, sent by God to serve God's people with the gospel of hope and salvation? Will you regard her as a servant of Christ and a steward of the mysteries of God? Will you pray for her, help and honor her for her work's sake, and in all things strive to live together in peace and unity of Christ? We will. By your statements of commitment and affirmation of this congregation, we welcome you as an interim pastor of St. Luke Lutheran Church in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. It is good to be welcomed in this place. We continue with the installation of the church council. As I call names, please come forward. The following people were elected by the St. Luke Community of Faith at our annual meeting to positions of leadership. We give thanks for their willingness to serve. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We rejoice now that these sisters and brothers will lead us in our life together and mutual mission as a congregation. Pauline Stephan, President. Come on, come forward here. Vince Bonifilio. <laughs> Bonifilio. Okay, I'm learning names as we do this. John Foss, Treasurer. Donna Lindell, Secretary. Jacob Grieving? Grieving. Grieving. Liaison to building and grounds. Lauren Bonfiglio. Bonfiglio. Got it right that time. <laughs> Did all <almost> right? <laughs> liaison to you. Dawn Traub, li liaison to discipleship. Jeff Hachtel, Hachtel. Liaison to worship and music. And Jill Johnson, liaison to parish. All right, if you all want to turn and face me. A reading from 1 Corinthians. There are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. You have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith bear witness to God, who gathers us into one together with the whole church. You are to seek to involve all members of this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support, so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation in the wide church, in this community, and in the whole world. You are to be faithful in your specific area of serving, that the Spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be examples of faith, active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding to this congregation. On behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, Will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? So respond, I will, and I ask God to help me. You may turn around now. People of God, I ask you, will you support these, your elected leaders? And will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? We will. We may ask God to help us. I now declare you installed as council members of this congregation. Almighty God bless you and direct your days and deeds in peace that you may be faithful servants of Christ. Amen. Thank you for your service. You may return to your seats. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able and we continue with confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sin to God, who is faithful and just, and has promised to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not trusted you with our whole heart. We have not loved one another in deed and in truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin and our soul on our spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. With joy I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you all your sin and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. We continue with our hymn. Be with you all.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace, that where there is hatred, we may sow love, where there is injury, pardon, and where there is despair, hope. Grant, O Divine Master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation names. Many years after being sold into slavery by his jealous brothers, Joseph reveals himself to them. Now the second in command in Egypt, Joseph reassures his brothers that God has used their evil intentions for good to preserve life during a devastating famine, and Joseph forgives them. The first reading is from Genesis, the 45th chapter. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to, serve, to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land for these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve you for a remnant on earth, to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here. But God, he has made me a father to Pharaoh and a lord of all of his house and ruler over all of the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord over all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children, and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have, I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. He kissed all, his, all of his brothers and wept upon them, and after that, his brothers talked with him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. In the Apostles' Creed, we speak of the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Using the metaphor of this planted seed in the story of Adam, Paul preaches passionately about the mystery of the following Christ's perfect life into eternity. A reading from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life until it dies, unless it dies. And as for what you have sown, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it as a body he has chosen, and to each kind his seed over its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown into dishonor. It is raised into glory. It is sown into weakness. It is raised into power. It is sown a physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last, Adam, became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, the man from dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. <coughs> Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel affirmation. Saint Luke. Lord, 
see you all later. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other one also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to someone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend that to those who, from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Congregation may be seated. I'd like to invite any children forward who would like to come forward for a children's message, the young or young at heart. Come on up. <laughs> Looks like we might have a few coming from up there. Yeah. Want to sit down here? Want to sit down there? Or you can stay there, wherever you're comfortable. That's okay. I'd be scared too if there was a new pastor. <laughs> Hi. I'm Pastor Marilyn. There's a few more people coming here. Pastor Marilyn. Hi. I'm going to wait for everybody to come up and then I'm going to ask you your name. So be ready with your name, okay? And please tell me your name. <laughs> Thank you. Come on up. Hi. Good morning. That's okay. Sit where you're comfortable. I'm Pastor Marilyn. Nice to meet you. So who would like to help me? I'm trying to learn everybody's name all at once. Can you imagine that? That's a lot of names. So I'm going to try to learn everybody's name. And if I sometimes maybe forget your name, just help me out. Because, you know, sometimes adults don't remember everything as a teenager. So can you tell me your name? Aiden? Peyton? Katie? Katie? Ella? Smile, okay. <laughs> Navi, hi. Logan. Oh. Serenity, oh, that's a beautiful name. So, thank you all. I know it's scary, you gotta come up here. Pastors sometimes forget, because I always have to go in front of a lot of people and talk in front of a lot of people, but sometimes it's scary for people, and I, I need to be reminded of that. So. Thank you for coming up. Um, I am what's called an interim pastor. So you've probably, the last few months, seen a lot of different pastors coming in here, huh? Well, guess what? I'm going to be here for a while. It's not until you call another pastor. So um, think of it like, do you ever have a substitute teacher at school? Yeah? Except I'm going to be kind of like the substitute teacher, but I'm going to be here for as long as it takes 
until you get the permanent one, the new one, okay? So you're gonna be seeing me and we're gonna get to know each other and I look forward to that. So um, this is kind of what it's gonna be like during worship when I call you all up. I appreciate you all coming up. So today we heard a story from the Bible. You like to read the Bible? Sometimes, yeah. Go to Sunday school, you study Bible lessons. And today we heard this story about um, Jesus telling us to do some things that are hard. Do you ever have a disagreement with somebody or somebody hurt your feelings or hurt you, did something to you that, that hurt? Anybody ever had that happen to them? Yeah, that happens a lot. Does that feel good? No, it feels icky. Ugh. It feels icky, icky. What can we do when that happens? What do we do if somebody maybe said something that hurt our feelings, or maybe we sometimes accidentally said something to maybe our brother or sister or friend or somebody that hurt their feelings? What can we do about that? so it's not feeling so icky. Any ideas? Yes. Absolutely, we can talk to them about it nicely. Say, look, I'm really sorry I hurt your feelings. I'm really sorry I didn't mean to say that to you. I didn't realize, I wasn't trying to call you a name. I, I just said something and then we, make up and we kind of ask them to what? Anybody know what that word is? Will you please forgive me? You ever hear that word? So when that happens, how does that feel? Much better, because you're friends again. And you know, as I was thinking about this, how icky it feels when we hurt somebody or somebody hurts us, and then how good it feels when we make up. You know what it reminded me of? Sour Patch. Anybody like these? You like these? Do you like Sour Patch? Do you like Sour Patch? You do? Parents, are they allowed to have some Sour Patch? Anyone object? <laughs> okay, we won't have too much. Anybody out there ever have a Sour Patch? Yeah, I don't care for them myself. <laughs> My son loves them, but that's kind of how it feels. So maybe when you have Sour Patch next time, then maybe you'll think about how that feels sour. Like, oh, I don't like my friend being mad at me. I want them to be friends again, or I I'm sorry I hurt my brother. And then at the end, it's sweet, right? So it's a good reminder to make up, to apologize, to ask for forgiveness. You're all like, come on, just give me the candy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see if a uh, pastor can open these. All right, I'm going to say a prayer, then we're going to take one and go back to our seat. Sound good? Let's pray. God, thank you for us being together, for me being the new pastor in this place for a while. Thank you for reminding us of things that are kind of sour when we hurt somebody's feelings or they hurt ours and we can make up and we can ask for forgiveness and we can ask you, God, to forgive us. And that is so sweet. Amen. All right. Uh-oh, now I'm spelling. That's not good. Come on up. Thank you for coming up. Can you help me pick that one up, please? Thank you. <laughs> no one's going to eat anything off the floor. You want one? Do you have a color that you like? Yeah? Oh, you took the green one. All right.
Oh, one more. I want to step on that. <laughs> I'm sure all building and grounds and altar people that there's nothing to be done for. <laughs> Can't go back to the candy. No. <laughs> So this morning, uh, I said that it is the seventh Sunday after Epiphany. This year we have an extra long Epiphany season because Easter is late. Not sure why I'm cutting the note here. Um, extra long Epiphany season. Easter is later. March second will be Ash Wednesday, which, believe it or not, is next week already. That is coming up. In the season of Epiphany, we hear about who Jesus is. Epiphany is manifestation or revelation. So God is revealed to us and made manifest in us. And today we hear these words from Luke as we continue what is called the Sermon on the Plain in Luke as opposed to the Sermon on the Mount in the other Gospels. It probably was a low amount, so plain is appropriate. And Luke's version is shorter. Last week we heard blessings and woes, and in Matthew you get all of the Beatitudes, and a little bit longer, a little bit more meaty. But there is a lot to unpack here today. A lot of hard words, if you take the time to read them, take them in, and try to digest them. Loving your enemies? What do you mean? We have enemies? I have enemies? Yeah, we have, yeah, we have enemies. Praying for those who seek to do you harm? Wow. Forgiving? Wow. It sounds so nice when we read it in Scripture and so, so easy. But it's not. We need to name that and claim that. But before we go on, I need to name something else. This Scripture passage in particular has been twisted by some. It has been twisted by some such that those who are in the midst of domestic violence or a toxic relationship would be encouraged by those who twist scripture to turn the other cheek and put up with that. And I'm going to say very loudly and clearly that that is not what God intends. God intends for us to be in loving relationships, in caring relationships, never those toxic relationships. Because everything that God does points to love. Because God is love. So who exactly is our enemy? Who's the enemy? Anyone that would seek to do us harm. Maybe we feel like an enemy might be the person that took our promotion at work. Maybe it's an ex. Maybe it's an encroaching neighbor. Something that's just getting under our skin. Sadly, there are people in the world who don't seek good and peaceful relationships. So how are we to love our enemies? Jesus certainly had enemies, right? Those seeking to do harm or stop the spread of the gospel. The apostles knew about this too. There were many enemies of the church of Christ, and there are today. Perhaps 
it is good to remember that we are called to love. Doesn't say we have to like everybody and everything that they are doing, but we are called to love all. We see this played out every day. Nothing unites people like a common enemy. Just turn on the news, you'll see that. We've been fighting the enemy of a virus for two years. Oh. But what might it look like to love when we feel challenged Instead of trying to seek revenge, we seek the way of love, of peace. Has anyone ever prayed for their enemies? Instead of seeking the way to revenge, what if we sought the way to reconciliation, to pray? Bible's pretty clear. Pray for your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Some time ago, I was going through a difficult period in my life, and a, a pastor, a mentor friend of mine, encouraged me. Instead of talking about this situation, are you praying about it? To pray for our enemies is challenging. Us. But prayer is transformative. Prayer changes not things, prayer changes us. What would the benefits of praying for our enemies look like? It helps us to forgive, to maybe see that person in another light. It prevents us from entering resentment and further anger, sliding down that slippery, sinful slope. And we will be amazed at how God transforms our situations, even in the face of enemies. Our outlook, our attitude, our spiritual growth and depth, that perhaps we seek reconciliation when we come to the conclusion that we are able to forgive and let go. I was struck by an image I saw on social media yesterday of a group of Ukrainian Christians. Now, if you know about Ukraine and what's going on there in the news right now, there's this threat of war. And to be a Christian in Ukraine is dangerous in and of itself. And they go out every day into the square as a public witness to pray. Now, are they praying for their safety? Probably. Are they praying for protection? Probably. But I was struck when I read that they were praying for the enemy. Even in the face of imminent war or threat, they made the public witness to pray together for peace. May we join them in our prayers for peace in the world. Now, what about this forgiveness business? Forgiveness is messy, too. To pray for your enemy, perhaps, is a catalyst toward forgiveness to help us to see the situation in a new light and perhaps forgive ones who have done us harm 
or for us internally to ask God for forgiveness. There's two sides of that, right? You're the forgiver or the forgivee. God's desire for us is that we be reconciled to God and to one another. Think of the martyr, Stephen, even in his death. Do not hold this sin against them. Or think of Jesus on the cross. They know not what they do. With forgiveness. So that is our challenge. To be people of mercy. To be messengers of mercy. God is merciful toward us, and we are called to love and show mercy toward one another. Maybe you've heard those definitions of grace and mercy, where grace is God giving us what we don't deserve, and mercy is God not giving us what we deserve. We are called to be messengers of mercy. Patient, loving, prayerful even for our enemies, and forgiving as we have been forgiven. Finally, I have a prayer. If you want to try this, Praying for your enemies. Um, this is, I've adapted a prayer from Sir Thomas More, which was actually written in 1535. So I tweaked out the these and thous for us. <laughs> and I, I have some copies if anyone is interested. I will actually um, send this one out. Take a copy for yourself, for your family. Just to keep uh, on you. As a reminder to pray for our enemies. Almighty God, have mercy on those who seek to do us harm, that bear me evil will, and see, would do me harm on their faults and mine together by such easy, tender, merciful means as your infinite wisdom best can devise. Grant to change us and to make us righteous, that we may be saved souls in heaven together, where we may ever live and love together with you, our sweet Savior, Christ. Lord, give me the patience and tribulation and grace in everything to conform my will to yours, that I may truly say, Fiat voluntat tua secut in helo et in terra. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. These good things, good Lord, that I pray for, Give me your grace to strive for. Amen. Please stand as you are.
Apostles' Creed. Together we confess. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your church to follow the leading of your love, especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy when we have first received mercy. God of grace, hear our prayer. Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it is time to bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens. Give favorable, favorable weather for planting. Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest and guard against famine and disease. God of grace, hear our prayer. Look upon our world with mercy that we a light with an abundance of peace. Protect all whose lives are marred by war and civil unrest. Release political prisoners and amplify the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. We especially pray for these service members, Kristen Bartell, Michelle Traub, Eric Rohr, Sam Vallier, Anthony Church, and also these concerns of our world and nation today that we name now in our hearts or alone. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your people cry out for mercy, <laughs> console our hearts that long for forgiveness, mend broken relationships, heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness, strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled, especially the family of Mark Sincata, Dee Turner, James Grieving, Casey Negron, Elroy Doran, Rosaline Bennett, Brian Harrison, Dolores Webb, Sally Freilich, and others we name now. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy Lord, as we prayerfully prepare for the coming season of Lent, reveal to each one of us the habit of our lives that hinder a closer walk with you. Show us those things that we may choose to fast from to loosen our earthly bonds and draw nearer to you in our own lives and to serve others as you have, as you have called us to do. God of grace, hear our prayer. Bind us together into one family. Teach us to forgive one another and resolve conflicts with humility and patience. Bless families of all shapes and sizes and show love to those who are lonely and or grieving. We pray for these St. Luke's members and in their families. Paul Gagwein, Charles and Diane Jackworth, Kate Dudek, Thomas and Tanya Ball, Dan and Paula Kiltz, Bev Pachtel, Bill Murs, Dean and Margaret Schilbach, Keith and Lindsay Keske, Elroy and Janet Dorn, God of grace, hear our prayer. We praise you for the saints you have, who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom as you have raised them to imperishable and eternal life. Sustain us in faith by promise of resurrection. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We share Christ's peace.
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Thank you. 
Please stand. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Ever faithful God, you have died the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Thank you.